What up, y'all? DC Fago guy. I've been certified. Went to the Certified Psychos Tour. The 2nd of December, Friday. It was in Louisville. First stop on the second leg of the tour. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to make a video about it to kind of talk about my experience with it. This is the first Twisted show I've gone to in, uh, I think, about five years, right? Six years. I went to the Spooktacular Horror Show in 2016 literally right before the beef popped off um so it's been a while since i had been to a twisted show and uh yeah so i'm titling this video hatchet rising tour 2022 um because going into this show seeing and hearing all the people that went to the first leg of the tour um i, I started to kind of have flashbacks because I had always heard stories about the Hatchet Rising tour. Obviously, I wasn't listening to ICP during that tour, during that time. I didn't get down until 2002. So I missed that tour. And I've always heard stories about how fucking epic that tour was. How Blaze did his set, then Twisted did their set, ICP did their set, and then they all came back out as Dark Lotus. And when the Certified Psychos tour was announced, I was like, yo, this is probably the closest we're ever going to get to another hatchet rising tour granted the bury the hatchet tour or bury the hatchet show at this point because with violent j's health issues i don't think a full tour is in the books um which we'll probably never ever ever get this show but this is like everybody's talked about this as like the dream show when they finally hash their shit out they're ready to bury the hatchet and perform together again uh this is how bury the hatchet the bury the hatchet concert should be um you know, obviously, if you haven't heard about the tour, you you know, you're kind of still not really keeping your attention on Twisted or whatever. Basically, what they did is it started off with Twisted. They performed a few songs and then they did a song that featured Blaze and then Blaze came out and sang with them. And then they left this Twisted left the stage and then Blaze did a couple songs and he did a song with ABK or he performed a song with ABK. ABK comes out and then Blaze leaves the stage. They kind of just switch to root it like that. Uh and before coming to the show, seeing and hearing people talk about how they did that, I was like, yo, this is going to be a great fucking show. So that first and foremost was one of the reasons why I wanted to go to it. A, it was going to be the closest thing to a Hatchet Rising tour that we were going to get. Uh, and B, just hearing people talk about the way they did the show. I was like, yo, this is very unique, the way that they did this. Um, I I don't know how many times I've been to a show and they perform a song that features another artist. And I'm like, yo, how dope would that be if they came out? Now, usually those kind of moments, they always reserve for the gathering. Like, obviously, um, you know, when they were all cool with each other, they would they would kind of do surprise little sets like that. You know, I know one year Boondocks did Death of a Hater and Jamie came out. You know, those they, I always love it when they do that. And this tour was kind of geared around that and made it a really great show. So uh, the show itself was absolutely fucking amazing. Um, for anybody that was there, came up and talked to me, uh, Shanzi, if you're watching this, Como, if you're watching this, um, I think is, is Frankie P from Replicon Radio, if you're watching, anybody that came up and interacted with me, if I seemed off during that show, I want to apologize right now. First, I normally go to shows with Megs, so she's kind of like my concert buddy. Being there without her, I think I closed off a little bit more than usual and became like extra inverted so i i literally sat in the corner of this venue if you've ever been to the headliners or if you haven't so you have like the stage area and then there's like a step up area where the bar is and then by that area there's a door that goes out to the smoking area i hung out in the corner basically all night i did not hardly fucking move from there i, I left one time to go upstairs and talk to Frankie P from Replica Radio, and then like uh, you know the main show started, so I went back down to my little corner. I held that fucking corner down all goddamn night. Uh, first, if you if you've never interacted with me at a show, uh, that's just typically where I hang out is in the back. I always love being able to see the show from the back, not get pulled into the craziness. Like I, I I've had my experiences with being in the pit when I was younger. I'm, I'm not that old, right? I'm just now getting ready to turn 35. So I, I know I'm kind of seeming exaggerate, like, oh, I'm so old. I'm not really that old, but when I was younger, you know, 
18, 19, I think 19 was my first show. I was 19 years old. I went in the pit then. I had been in the pit a few other times since then. Um, you know, I, I find myself just loving to be in the back and enjoy the show, sing along to the songs and not really wild out. I'm not really a partier. So uh, if you ever are going to a show and you know I'm going to be there, that's where you're going to find me is in the back. And that's what I did. I hung the fuck out in the back and, you know, coma and Shanzi both were like, here you are in the corner still. And I had to remind them both, like, yeah, you guys know me. This is where I chill. I chill in the back. That's that's my spot. I hold it the fuck down in the back. But, uh, yeah, if I seemed a little extra off, it's it was a combination of I didn't have Megs there, so I was kind of extra introverted. Um, and then on top of that, I kind of fucked up <laughs> on the drive down. I, I left at 1 p.m., Ish. I actually left at 12.45. I hit the road at 12.45. It was slated to be a three-hour drive. I stopped once just north of Indianapolis to take a piss, got back on the road, and for whatever reason, <coughs> I had to detour through Indianapolis. If you've ever driven in Indianapolis, there's a interstate that goes around the whole city. It's 465. That's like the main artery in and out of Indianapolis. It's usually quick to go through Indianapolis. I didn't hit any stop and go traffic. Sometimes you hit that on that fucking interstate. For whatever reason, it had me exit onto Emerson Avenue, which is not too far from downtown. And it had me take Emerson Avenue several miles, I think five or six miles south. So I hit several fucking red lights and hit tons of traffic. That added so much time to my travel. Because when I left my original plan, because I was crashing with the homie Coma, he had to work that day, so he was trying to get off early around 4, and I'm like looking at my travel time. I'm like, I'm probably going to get there a little early before he gets off work. So my plan was to head to a restaurant, have something to eat. Well, because of my travels through Indy, that, that threw me off. So when I got to Coma's, um, he was already home. Like By the time I got down to Louisville, Coma was already off working at home, and I didn't want to keep him waiting, so I just went to his house. I wasn't sure if him and I were going to go out and get something to eat. Um, you know, when I got to his house, we, you know, said our hellos and he's like, yo, I'm, I'm ready to head to the show. If you are about that time, it was, you know, five thirty, six o'clock. We, we hung out for a little bit at his place. Um, I wasn't sure if him and I were planning to go out to eat or not. So I didn't really suggest it. And I should have, I should have been like, Hey, let's go get something to eat first. But I didn't, I just kind of was like, well, maybe they'll have food at the venue. And I held on to that hope right there when I got to the venue I don't know if they were serving food or not. I didn't see anybody eat anything. I assume it was all just drinks. So I get to the venue and there was no food. So literally the only thing I ate on Friday was breakfast. And I ate it at like 8 in the morning. Not even that. It was like 7.30. 7, about 7.15 in the morning. So I went all day without eating. So by the time the show, the show rolled around, I'm starving. <laughs> like I said, I fucked up. I should have got something to eat. I didn't. Um, I, I literally had nothing to eat all day long. I don't know if the drive caused this, but then on top of all of that, I also had a headache. I took medicine before leaving Coma's house. Um, it kicked in. It took a nice little edge off, but I think I was feeling the effects of the medicine. Uh, I was feeling the effects of basically being starving. <laughs> I mean, I had food in, in me and shit like that, but like, I, I just wasn't, I guess, in the full, like mode of i'm at a fucking concert i was just like zoned the fuck out so if anybody came in and interacted with me or you know coma shanzi if i seemed off that's why i apologize i i dropped major balls i, I could have i could have made the show a little bit better of an experience for me by you know taking care of myself prior to going into that but all in all i had a good time i had an absolute great time i was just very closed off and very quiet uh, people did come up and interact with me, you know, obviously I hung out with Coma. I have a funny story about that. Mr. Green, he was one of the openers there. Um, he's a rapper as well as, uh, you know, he's kind of a Instagram personality, I think. Uh, I know he's on Instagram. That's how I knew of him first. And I realized he actually does rap. He came running up to me all excited. He he looked at Coma and he says, hey, man, can you, can you do me a favor? Can you get a picture with me and this guy? And he was hype as fuck. He's all, he's like laughing. He's like, do you know who this is? This is DC Fago guy. Take the picture. He leaves. And then me and Coma just kind of start laughing. Because I'm like, I don't think he realizes who you are, Coma. Uh, Coma's been my homie for years. Like, years and years. Like, he, he's been a subscriber since before I had a thousand subscribers. And, you know, he's done a lot of the artwork for me. When you go to the main channel and you see that banner, the channel art. 
that he designed that, you know, he designed the My Two Cents image that you can get on a t-shirt right now, link in the description. Uh, he's done a few designs for me. So Coma is the homie. I just thought that was a funny moment because Mr. Green was like all hype and excited and asked Coma to take a picture. And then he's like, do you know who this is? It's like, I don't think he realized this is Coma, man. This is the homie. Uh, but yeah, that was one funny moment. Um, yeah, had a really good talk with Shanzi. Um, Shanzi was, uh, I met Shanzi through being a member of Carnival Spirits. He kind of, he was doing some YouTube stuff prior to Carnival Spirits. And I remember telling the guys at Carnival Spirits, yo, we need to get this Shanzi guy on the channel. And he ended up joining. Um, so he, he was, he did some stuff with Carnival Spirits there for a while. But if you guys know Shanzi at all, if you've ever interacted with Shanzi, Shanzi is a clown. He is one of the most laid back guys, chill, fucking has fun. <laughs> creates great memories man me and megs have a great memory with him from back in 2017 where we made a bet with him that we had crashed at a hotel with him in coma for the show that they had i think it was may 5th of 2017 in indy we all shared a whole uh, hotel room and on the way out of the hotel there was a birthday party and shanzi had gotten his hands because he'd already started drinking prior to leaving because I was going to be the designated driver that night. He grabs this balloon from the lobby from this party, and he takes it to the concert with him. And we had this bet prior to going into that, that he would lose that thing by the end of the night. And he didn't think he would. He thought he could, he could keep it. But it was, it was a funny story because, you know, through the crowd, you just see this fucking balloon move around until finally you don't see the balloon anymore. He lost the balloon and lost the bet and bought breakfast for us the next morning. But uh, yeah, that was one funny, fun, funny memory with Shanzi. But you know, had a really good talk with Shanzi, kind of about the whole divide and how at, at the end of the day, like I think too many jugglos were taking shit too serious. Like this, the beef is between four grown men. Like we're, let's just enjoy the music. So it was a great conversation that I had with him, and you know, he kind of helped bring me down and ground me with that because, like I said, he's he's a clown, man. He's one of the most chill dudes ever and I, it kind of helped remind me that when i come on here and make videos to not take some of the shit so fucking serious like you know what i mean so great conversation with shanzi uh you know had a couple good conversations with frankie p from replicon radio uh um, you know overall just just really good interacting with different people uh another funny story you know of course it's in louisville so that's buckshot's backyard Buckshot did have a surprise performance, and uh, afterwards, while the main show was going on, he did come up and try to say hey, because he spotted me, he's like, hey, what's up, Bubba, just wanted to come say what up, how's the show? And in the process of doing that, he had like five, six different people come up and like want pictures with him, so he took the pictures, gave me a fist bump, uh, but yeah, it was cool that he tried to come say hey, but <laughs> of course, naturally, you know, in your backyard, you're going to have people that know who you are and want to come fucking, you know, say what up and get a picture. So, um, yeah, uh, Buckshot, if you're watching this, great. The show was fucking great, man. Show was fucking great. I, I would like to come down to the mob style Christmas party, but I don't think that's going to happen just because I went to this show. I'm trying to go back into money saving mode, but one of these days I'd like to make it down for a mob, for a mob style, actual themed concert. I think that'd be a lot of fun. So the drive wasn't terrible. It really wasn't that bad at all. Um, but yeah, all in all, the concert itself was really fucking great. I loved the way that they did the show, how they had Blaze come out and then they had ABK come out. And then, of course, they kind of had like a little quick intermission where they went and got ragged up. Uh, assumably, assumably, I don't know if it really was these guys or not, but, you know, the psychopathic riders, they jacked the show. They came out. They fucking did a show as well. And that was actually my first time ever seeing the Riders at all. And I know people are going to comment, like, but it wasn't the Riders because... Meh, meh, meh. You know, to me, the Riders itself is its own little gimmick. It's own, it's, its own little thing. Like, to me, the Riders is not... I, I, to me, I feel like the Riders doesn't belong on just one label. I think the Riders is a gimmick and it's an idea that's literally about jacking shit jacking beats and making it your own so the whole idea and gimmick of riders i think regardless of whether psychopathic riders exists or the east side riders exist or m &E riders however you want to call them uh, in their album they call themselves the east side riders so that's how i'm going to refer to them uh, but yeah it was really cool finally getting to see riders live for the first time ever because i had never seen them live and then we got to talk about the closer diet lotus and i'm going to call it that and it's going to piss people off and i don't mean it disrespectful i don't mean it as a diss 
but to say it's Dark Lotus, it's not because ICP was not there and it was missing that element. To me, Dark Lotus was always so epic because it was ICP, Twisted and Blaze. So I, I refer to it as Diet Lotus. I don't mean it as disrespectful. I just mean it as it doesn't have all the ingredients to truly be Dark Lotus. So I thought the show was really good. I've seen Dark Lotus before. I saw them on the Opaque Brotherhood tour. And, you know, that show itself was so fucking epic. It was so great to see. There's so much, like, energy that I picked up on at that show. And I felt a little bit of that when Diet Lotus was performing. I did feel it at the Certified Psychos tour show. But I would be lying if I didn't, like, find myself missing ICP and wishing that ICP was involved. But ICP is not involved for their own reasons. They're... The reason we don't get Dark Lotus is because of a decision that Jay and Shaggy made. So um, I kind of went into the show like I know it's not Dark Lotus, but this is the closest I'm going to get to seeing Dark Lotus again. So, I mean, and I've said this in the past and it's pissed people off. And I don't again, I don't mean this to be taken as a, like a disrespect. But, you know, I've gone and seen shows from cover bands where where bands perform another artist's music it's not the same, but you can still vibe out to it because it's music you like. And that's kind of how I felt about seeing them perform Dark Lotus without ICP. It it kind of just felt like paying tribute to Dark Lotus without it actually truly being Dark Lotus. Even though I know that Twisted, Blaze, and ABK have just as much right to do Dark Lotus, it just, it wasn't the same. It really wasn't. But I would be lying to you if I didn't say I wasn't all chilled the fuck out and in my feels when Juggalo Family was on and they close out the show with Lotus, Lotus. Like if I, if I, I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't fucking in my feels during that moment. So, but all in all, it wasn't the same, but I still fucking enjoyed it. I would ultimately love to see them truly do Dark Lotus again. But again, that's not, that's a decision that two of the members have made not to do. So uh, this was the closest I could get to having that experience. And I enjoyed it for what it was. Wasn't what it, what I really want to see. Like I, what I, what, what I really want to see is them all together again. But if I'm not going to get that, I might as well have this. And I found myself enjoying it, even though it wasn't what, um, even though it wasn't really what it, what I wanted. You know what I mean? That makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but the show, absolutely great. Um, I did end up buying a tour shirt. I know I said I'm slowing down on merch and shit, but I get there. Yeah, the merch was all lined up on the left and I'm looking and I'm like, oh man, they got some great fucking shirt designs. And you know, I, ultimately I was like, I'm just going to get a tour shirt. I've been trying to slow down on it, but I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do it. I don't, you know, I got rid of a lot of twisted shit when I wasn't fucking with them anymore. You know, Again, I I was one of those idiots that really just took it to a personal level and I, I'd never needed to. So I, I do regret some of the shirts I've gotten rid of now. With that, now that I realize, like, why am I so mad at these guys over, <laughs> over their own problems? You know what I mean? It's kind of like, I don't know. But yeah, so I did pick up a tour shirt. They had Gilf there. Glyph, sorry. Replicon Radio guys got me fucked up wanting to call the new album Gilf. So I've been saying it everywhere I go. Uh, I did pick up the new album, Glyph, even though I already had one coming in the mail. Uh, my CD was supposed to get to my house the day of the concert. And I was like, yo, this will be perfect timing. I can listen to it on the drive down to Louisville. I didn't end up getting it until Saturday. So Friday night at the show, I did pick up another copy. So I do have two. That being said, if somebody wants to try to win one of those copies, you'll probably get the one that's in my car right now from the show because the other one's autographed and that's kind of the one I might hang on to. I don't know, but I'm going to give one of the copies away. If you want to enter into that, wait for the review and then comment ticket, please in the review. And then I'll do a drawing later for it. Um, but yeah, the show again, it was really good. I should have went with better care taken for myself so that I could have enjoyed it more, but uh, overall being hungry fighting off a headache, uh, being completely introverted because my normal concert partner wasn't with me. I had a good time. I, I hope I seemed like I had a good time. As I know Coma asked me if I had a good time. 
but I, I did have a good time. It was a great show. And if the show's coming near you, um, tickets aren't that much. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's worth going and checking out if you are, if you're even slightly interested in going, go. I don't think you'll regret it. You'll either go there and be like, oh, okay, this is like, uh, I didn't have a good time. But I don't think you'll fully regret it if you go and don't have a good time because it was it was entertaining. I think you'll have a good time. So if it's coming close to you and you even slightly think you want to go, go. Because this could turn into another Hatchet Rising tour kind of thing. And I've heard multiple people say they could have gone to that concert. They didn't and they regret it. So this could turn into regret for you if you don't go. If you still fuck with Twisted, you should definitely be there. If you're on the fence and you're not really sure, go. If you're still on the whole fuck twisted shit, then don't go. But yeah, I had a good time. I think you'll have a good time. And uh, yeah, I guess that is my review. Shout out to Frankie P from Replicon Radio. He hooked me up with a free shirt. He like, <laughs> so it's still on Twitter. He tweeted me at this show. I look up because they were selling merch at the, on the balcony in the upstairs area. And uh, <laughs> I look up, there he is. And I shake my head, no, he asked if I could wear a 3X, and I said, I, I go 4, and then tweeted him back that my fat ass needs a 4X, and so he, like, held out a shirt for me, but rather than have him toss it, I went up, and, you know, we we talked a little bit up there before the show started, so, um, shout out to him, that was really fucking cool, and the shirt design is really actually fucking awesome, I thought, but, yeah, shout out to Coma for letting me crash in your fucking spare bedroom, man, that, that bed was actually pretty comfy, and the bedding was like brand new. I think he went and bought brand new bedding for me. I don't know. Either that or his fucking like detergent is amazing. Because that was like brand new sheets and bedding. That's a weird That's a weird way to end off this video. But shout out to Coma for Let Me Crash. Shout out to Replicon Radio. Shout out to Shanzi. Shout out to Buckshot. And shout out to everybody that made that show as great as it was. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.